Hi everyone, welcome to this video. My name is T. If you're new here, I really do hope everyone's day is going well. So today I want to talk about the ever popular, ever sh fire starting topic of colorism. Colorism is one of those topics I've received quite a few requests to talk about on this channel, but I've never actually done it because I don't know, I kind of just figured that people had a common understanding of its meaning, its oppressive nature, and the fact that it still runs rampant in our community. I know there are people who aren't really familiar with the nuances of colorism, but I assume that in the very least people knew that it was a bad thing. But apparently I'm the dickhead in the dungarees because lately I've been seeing an influx of people who are still denying its mere existence. Can't ignore that, so. Let's have this long overdue conversation. So what is colorism? The National Conference for Community and Justice, also known as NCCJ, defines colorism as a practice of discrimination by which those with lighter skin are treated more favorably than those with darker skin. This practice is a product of racism in the United States in that it upholds the white standards of beauty and benefits white people in the institutions of oppression, media, medical world, etc. Now that's a great definition. The only note I'd like to make is on the part where it says it is a product of racism in the US. That's true, but I wanna emphasize that colorism isn't exclusive to the United States, it's a worldwide issue. So let's take it a step further. Colorism is the child of racism. So in groups that are already oppressed, people of color, it upholds white supremacy by giving more favor to those who look closer to a white standard. Similar to racism, colorism affects darker complected people socially and systemically as it encourages their mistreatment by selling the narrative that dark skin is less desirable, less trustworthy, and overall less deserving of respect. To be clear, colorism is not as severe as racism, I mean, they're not the same thing. But the, I guess you could say, principle of who is oppressed is very similar to that of racism. The same way black people can't be racist to white people, dark skinned people can't be colorist to light skinned people. It just doesn't work that way. Can someone be mean to you because of your light skin tone? Yes. Can someone pick on you and or cause you physical harm because of your light skin tone? Yes. And all of these experiences are valid and are not being minimized. But if you are of a lighter complexion and you feel as though you face colorism, answer these few questions for me. Have you ever had your light skin tone compared to roaches or feces? In your youth, were you ever denied gracefulness, daintiness, or your overall rightful innocence as a child because of your light skin tone? Did you ever have to go to therapy or on a personal wellness journey to unlearn all of the self-hatred that society and the media has predisposed you to because of your light skin tone? And final question, are you oppressed because of your light skin tone? No. And that's the difference. <clears throat> we on a roll now. Let's keep going. Let's, let's take it a step further. The bias of colorism, specifically for dark-skinned black women, very often involves defeminization and dehumanization. For example, saying dark-skinned black women look like Rottweilers. That is not only dehumanizing because it compares a human being to a dog, but defeminizing because that specific breed of dog is known to be very violent and aggressive. Now. Around this part is where y'all always seem to get tripped up because I still see people saying, oh, but what about saying you want your man to have a, a strong jaw like a pit bull? What happened to y'all saying that dark skin is what grills look like Dobermans? First of all, y'all said that, not me, let's be clear. When people say those things about men, black men specifically, it is almost always said with a positive connotation because like Jackie Ina said, it is more acceptable for men to take on traits of violence and aggression because those traits are synonymous with hypermasculinity. And that in and of itself is a problem, but we're not gonna get into that because we already talked about it in my black male femininity video. Or at least I hope we did. All right, now I wanna talk about the blatant denial of colorism that I've been seeing lately on Twitter to be specific. About two years ago, there was this whole debate amongst the rap girls. Princess Nokia said she recognizes her privilege as a light-skinned woman in the industry and shouted out a dark-skinned rapper, Asian Doll. Then, multiple lighter-complected rappers came out saying colorism was a myth and success has nothing to do with skin tone. It all boils down to talent. And then some she's like, when I call, only time I ever said something about a black bitch, I call Asian Doll a bitter black bitch. And that's because I'm like, that every post the was making was about her skin and she bitter about it like so she 
bitter. Then to top it all off, Cash Doll, who is a dark-skinned rapper, co-signed by saying that she too doesn't believe in colorism, maybe because she hadn't experienced it herself yet. Cash Doll likely never experienced colorism because she possesses an overwhelming amount of sex appeal. And I say that because, okay, let's break it down like this. So like I mentioned earlier, the bias of colorism suggests that dark skin is synonymous with violence, aggression, anger, masculinity, etc, etc. So if someone is a colorist and when they see dark skin, they immediately think of those attributes. But a dark skinned woman is hyper feminine, i.e. long flowy hair, makeup always done, nails always done, a nice hourglass shape, big titties, big butt, slim waist. In the eyes of a colorist, Hyperfemininity, and in Cash Doll's case, also hypersexuality, compensates for that default expectation of aggression and masculinity. This is exactly why up until maybe like three years ago, all of those Instagram pages that were dedicated to dark-skinned women mainly posted women like Cash Doll, women like Bria Miles, Bernice Burgos, these very voluptuous women who are not shy about showing that off. I have a theory that those specific images are pushed to counterbalance the bias that many have against dark-skinned black women. Now the women I just named are gorgeous and they of course deserve to be celebrated whether they have or want to show off those extraordinary bodies or not. And y'all already know my queer ass loves the scenery. I love the scenery. And I know it might be a little bit different these days because people are waking up, but when I was in high school, Shit, even when I was in college, that's all I saw. I didn't see no Lupita. I didn't see no Danielle Brooks, no Tika Sumter. And all these women are just as beautiful. So it's very possible that Cash Doll was, or at least felt like she was, an exception to the rule because she was tokenized for her hyperfemininity and her hypersexuality. But either way, her denying the existence of colorism was gaslighting. Now I do wanna say Cash Doll has since retracted her statements, love that for her, and I believe she did that because she finally experienced it herself. But this is why awareness is key, all right? The egocentric mindset of if something doesn't happen to me or someone I know, the problem doesn't exist, we gotta kill that. Just like in my Black Scent video, there were black, black people in the comments who might I add let every single comment with, well I'm black and I don't. Okay, Carlton Banks. Basically trying to emphasize that because they were black and they'd either never experienced what I was talking about or never felt offended by what I was talking about, it didn't exist. Are you mad? Are you f mad, Captain Coon? I've never experienced an earthquake before, but I know them exist. I've never seen my brain before, but I know it's in there. Things don't need to happen to you for them to be real. And I know your mommy told you otherwise, but no. The world does not revolve around you and your individual experiences. So save that I gotta see it to believe it bullshit for mermaids and Bigfoot. But if you would like some examples of colorism in the media, I have a few. Basketball wives. Who is the most famous Basketball Wives cast member, aside from Shawnee? Evelyn? Tammy? Now what are they famous for? I see. Now which Basketball Wives cast member was asked to sit in a separate room while they had the reunion, although to my knowledge the most she's ever done is push someone? Okay. Coco Jones, singer, actress. That face could easily grace the cover of someone's fashion magazine. After the network used her to fulfill their token black girl role, guess who we never heard of again? Guess whose creative control was suppressed until her label eventually dropped her? Y'all think Normani's career is a little inactive now? After she left Fifth Harmony, if she didn't snatch our hairlines back three inches with love lives and motivation, she would have been so quickly forgotten. So quickly. Just like Notori in 3LW and just like Coco Jones. And then you wonder why women like Kiki Palmer are jacks of all trades. <sighs> I remember a couple years back before she got the talk show, people were saying, girl, what do you do? Are you a singer? Are you an actress? An Instagram comedian? Pick one, you're doing the most, just pick one. No, she's surviving. 
You gotta be amazing at damn near everything when you're a dark-skinned woman. Why do you think we meet these women and they already have a dozen talents by the time they get their first big break? Kiki, Ryan Destiny, Issa Rae, Michaela Cole? Mindy Colling is one of the most accomplished South Asian women in Hollywood. But whose faces do we see more in American media? y'all to wake up this is not a coincidence it's colorism and i know people think this is an issue of the past because you get on tiktok and you see white guys calling black women mocha coffee fudge chocolate caramel nubian princesses but it's so much deeper than that this is an issue that is deeply woven into our society deeply woven into our history and then we have the preference debate ah boy before I was gonna keep it to myself that actually I think I'm a little bothered now because why is it that the girls I'm not a colorist that's just my preference I'm not biased that's just my type I saw a great TikTok of a girl explaining what I'm about to say but I forgot to save it so I can't replay the video but but if y'all know who she is please link her in the comments so she can get her rightful credit basically when someone asks you what is your mm -mm. Let's make this personal. When I ask you, what is your type? I wanna know, do you like musicians or do you like athletes? Do you like them hefty or do you like them petite? You like big boobs, a bubble butt? What are some physical attributes that you really admire, you really desire in a romantic partner, but wouldn't necessarily dismiss them completely for if they didn't have? That's what I'm asking, okay? So if you like Rihanna and you like everything about her, you like her eyes, you like her lips, you like her body, but you would no longer consider her beautiful if she was Lupita and Nyong'o shade, that's not a preference. In that case, lighter skin is not something you prefer, it's something you demand because of a bias. What's not clicking? What's not clicking? And I know what you're probably thinking. Well, you sitting up there lighter complected yourself, how does this affect you? What you gonna do about it? I'm glad you asked. I am of Jamaican heritage, so colorism is not a foreign concept to me. And colorism in Jamaica is unbelievable. And I think it's only getting worse over time because you have these famous stars who are not shy about the fact that they bleach their skin. In fact, some Jamaicans flaunt their bleached skin as a badge of honor to show that they've leveled up in life. That's why Spice, who is a very popular Jamaican artist, she did that social experiment where she pretended to bleach her skin. Now, according to Spice, her most common hate comments are those that urge her to lighten her skin or say that her career would be much better off if she just took that next step and bleached her skin. In response to this, she lightened her skin with makeup and released the song called Black Hypocrisy. And that was the first time I ever saw the colorism issue in Jamaica addressed on such a mainstream scale. But unfortunately, it's like it went in one ear and right out the other and it did not permeate the way it should have. But I'm still hopeful. I still have faith that one day it will. And Sydney Black has an amazing video that provides insight on skin bleaching. It's extremely informative and fact-based. And I especially love that video because she's really speaking from a compassionate passionate standpoint so not to shame anyone who has bleached their skin because for some people it's not just about vanity for some people there are a lot of psychological factors that go into that so check her video out I know people personally who have and are still bleaching and I never quite understood it thankfully my mother is a dark-skinned woman so is her mother and her mother as well so I grew up in a family where I got to see beautiful confident dark-skinned women who never once complained about their complexion or gave me preferential treatment because of mine. My family consists of all shades, so it kills me to know that some of them have experienced the awfulness that is colorism. But even if I didn't have a close relationship with dark-skinned people, I would still speak out against colorism because what? 
something bad doesn't have to happen to me or someone that I know in order for it to be real or wrong. So it is my responsibility as a lighter complected woman to reject compliments that place my skin tone on a pedestal. It is my responsibility to encourage opportunities for and even deny opportunities where I feel a darker woman would be better suited or lacks representation. It is my responsibility to not use skin tone as an insult ever which I have regrettably done in the past. And honestly, I make a strong effort to not retreat to insulting someone's physical appearance when I have a disagreement with them. I feel like it's cowardly and it weakens your argument. And it's still a work in progress, you know? Just like in my WAP video, I was just, I was just so fired up that men was doing all that rah-rah. I literally led the video with something like, well, y'all are all stupid and you have Vienna sausages for dicks. <laughs> Was she out of pocket? Yes, she was. But yeah, insulting physical appearance is weak and it can be extremely harmful, especially in the context of colorism. So that is how I feel about it. Those are my thoughts. You know, when I was writing this video, I was like, dang, maybe maybe you do have something to say about it. Why'd you wait so long? But I'm actually happy I sat on it for a little while, gave me some time to cultivate more thoughts and articulate them better. So recording this video really served as like an overdue catharsis for that. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching, especially if you made it to the end of the video. Be sure to leave your thoughts and your comments down below. And as I'm in a position of privilege, I do want to use my platform to uplift suppressed voices. Eh, that was a mouthful. <laughs> so if you are a dark skinned person and you feel comfortable doing so, please feel free to use my comment section to vent, to share personal stories and experiences, to enlighten me, to correct me, my platform is yours. I also want to give a big thanks to my cousin, more like my sister, Jamelia, my queen of resilience and determination, my college graduate with a bachelor's degree in psychology. <laughs> yes, good day. Thank you for being so helpful. Thank you for sharing your insight and your personal stories about navigating life as a dark skinned black woman. I really, really appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, however you're feeling today, and be sure to subscribe for more content. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.